Okay guys, I'm ready to do my, I don't know what I did there, um, tutorial for my gift idea number five. Uh, now, I made another one just to show you a variation. This one I did with an embroidery. I put some pretty lace on. I did the same background with the old letter. And then inside... I used a graphics fairy end paper that they have and I printed it you won't be able to see on a textured paper so it's like a little bit rough it has a little bit of a rough surface it's for um, drawing and sketching and that sort of thing but I printed it on a yeah on a rough sort of paper so it gives you the idea of an original piece so that's that one um, so this is a variation um, on what you can do. You could put a little label there if you wanted to, little um, cluster like I thought. I didn't put this on, but you could, you know, put something on like that. You could collage your front. There's so many possibilities. I'm really thrilled about this little project. Um, you could put something there. So, yeah, so that's just a variation um, if you went to have this one. I still like this one too. I like them both. I actually really love this project. It's a great project. So, okay, so what we're going to do is make one. Um, I'm, I've already cut my pieces out, but I'll explain to you how I did them. So basically, I've got... Where is it? Oh, here. Here they are. I printed out. So what I did was I went on the Graphics Fairy. Um, the Graphics Fairy have this image here. Um, when I printed out, I'm not actually that excited about it. Um, I might cut it down. This is how I'll cut it down. See, the height-wise it fits. So what I would do is just um, trim it. I'll just put some pencil mark there. Trim it down and then um, see what it looks like. Because some of you might have access to that. Um, now this has been sprayed with um, some protective spray. Although I've only sprayed it once. probably needs a few sprays before it's fully waterproof now you must be careful don't cut it down too small go slightly bigger than smaller because otherwise it'll be smaller than your card stock so I'm just going to show you an alternative I'm not going to make this one um, but I will show you how I'm adapting it to my size now I like the size of um, the one that I made so that's why I cut that one down but that would go on there and I would embellish that a little bit. Um, it's a bit plain, but just to give you an idea, you could have some hemp on the edge. Um, you could put a little bit of something there. This is not going the right way. I know you had, you'd have to, I think I would embellish this one a little bit because it's very monotone if you know what I mean so that's that one I'll just put that one up there I'm not going to do that one I'm doing this one now the way I got my size was it's pretty much the size of my scan how it printed out that's I mean there's there's no rules to the size you can make them smaller you can make them bigger I've got this oh there's an extra piece I might, I'll slip that one in um, now I've got a bit of a mess here as usual because I've got everything sort of pulled out. Now first of all, this is all very, let's start from the very beginning. Um, you need a piece of cardstock. This is 160 GSM cardstock. Um, the reason why you're seeing this printing on here was I had put some envelopes and things and um, glassine bags here and I had printed on them. Um, and that then it had gone onto the paper as well. Um, now I've got a removable uh, spray glue. Let me just grab it. See that this is the brand I can get on Amazon here. It's Icona Plus Removable, and it's a spray a spray adhesive. Okay, um, you spray that on your cardstock, and then you put your fabric on top. Put your piece of fabric on top preferably ironed if you like me so just say this is my fabric I put it on top I smooth it all out it totally covers the page and then I'll flip it over and then trim off the excess and then you um, and then make it sure it's all smooth and then um, as you can see this is still sticky too I mean I can still use this without spraying it again I can probably use it 10 or 15 times before I have to spray it again so that's really sticky so I just keep that and reuse it um, 
you smooth out your excuse me and you smooth out your um, fabric and then feed it through your printer whichever direction you need to let it dry a little bit and then go and spray it with your um, fixative and the one I'll show you here the one I've got that I use is this one here Dom Venice Fixativa fixative varnish oh mine's a gloss finish it's not very glossy um, especially on the paint on the fabric um, or otherwise you can use hairspray apparently I haven't tried it yet but I'm going to because um, those spray fixatives are quite expensive um, I'm going to try hairspray so basically you're supposed to spray your fabric with hairspray first leave it to dry for 24 hours um, then you can you know put it onto your cardstock and print on it and then you spray it again and let it like you let it dry and then you spray it again with the hairspray and it apparently fixes the color to the fabric I haven't tried it yet and I'm just waiting till I finish my other so this kind of fits here so I'm going to cut this out so we've printed on our fabric we've got our fabric ready I mean you don't have to print on fabric you could even collage on your piece of I mean the possibilities with this little project are endless so I hope people are going to experiment and if you're on Instagram I love it if you tag me um, so I can see um, I just wasn't as you know was inspired by my little um, antique one that I had um, there's someone mentioned isn't it sad that these family photographs just don't end up in the families and I, th I totally agree I just wonder about that okay so I've trimmed it um, then so you trim it down you've got your size whatever you're using you might have one yourself that you scan in print it out and then that before you cut any cardstock print it out and then you've got your size then I put it onto my cutter and I got my measurements and I my cutter has a little my big cutter has a marker that you can put there and so you just rest your papers up against that and that gives you all the always the same width you don't have to sort of eyeball it um, so you cut your papers in both directions and I've cut them all now I'll show you the paper this is I don't know what weight it is because it doesn't say um, I just bought this at the supermarket it's a fab oh yes 220 GSM 50 by 70 centimeters um, Fabriano can you see that yes a Fabriano um, cardstock and I got three I think I got three sheets for three euro 40 or something like that um, I expect it doesn't say but I expect that it's acid free because this is for art so I expect it's acid free um, I would imagine that all of Fabriano is a very famous paper company that they are all acid free as you can see I've used all three so I guess you can probably use more or less one sheet for about three uh, one album one sheet for one album so um, I've trimmed all my pieces of paper I'm going to uh, now put my images on I've got my this one is bigger okay so what I'm what I did with this one was um, I trimmed it this the white bit off and you can see my my printer makes a bit of a mess at times get black marks on it like I'm not concerned about that because that piece will I'll just make sure I trim that piece off because this is bigger than what I need so we'll trim this one down as well and we're going to glue them on so I'm going to make one fairly similar I don't have the tra um, Tracy Fox thing there I'll have to find something else to put on because I haven't printed another one out um, my issue with that one was it was on adhesive paper so um, yes it probably wasn't the best thing to use okay so that's that and that's that now we need to get I've got my glue book here and I use um, one sheet uh, one sheet of this for each time I glue because I get glue everywhere Although with the front and the, the back pieces, it doesn't matter because you're going to put your end papers on there as well, if you want to. Okay, so that should be about enough. And I just smooshed it around with my finger. You can use a card or a paintbrush. I tend not to use paintbrushes because you have to wash them really well. Um, otherwise, they end up going all stiff. And inevitably mine you know me go stiff because I don't wash them properly because I'm in a hurry and so 
I might as well, I can clean my finger much easier than a, brain, than a, than a paintbrush. So you can see you get glue everywhere. Probably, uh, no, I, I will change that because otherwise I'll get glue all over this when I flip it over. Now, what I learned from my first attempt was um, that I, I had to th um, sort of get rid of. Um, you need to, sorry, I've got something on my finger. You need to put your um, image down from the front. So from this end, I mean, from here. So that way, if you have a bit of um, black showing there, we're going to cover that anyway with some lace or some hemp or linen, whatever you choose. And the thing about fabric is, first of all, when it prints, um, the going through the printer may pull the fabric a little bit. So your your um, image is going to be a little bit wonky, like mine's. See, it swerves up there. Um, but you can tug and pull it a little bit to mold it to what you want. You've got a little bit of give with fabric as opposed to paper. So see, I'm, I'm giving it a little tug. I need to get rid of that white there um, to see if I can sort of get it to go on straight. And I think I want it more like that. And it's not necessarily going to 100% cover up your black cardstock, but it's actually not an issue because um, because you can't really see it. So I'm pretty happy with how that's gone on. And I'm going to have to do some trimming. And I'm also going to stitch around it as well. So that that little bit there will not be so noticeable. So then I'm going to flip it over. And I've got a little bit, few bits here to trim off. I'm back on my phone. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody could hear me properly and I'm just hoping that I'm on screen because as you know with my phone the arm cover totally covers up the screen and I can't see what I'm doing what's going on I think I'm on screen yes I did test it before I started but um, you never know with me okay great news Lily thank you thank you okay so that's that. Now, in my original one, I used um, some real um, marbled paper. In this one, because maybe a lot of you again have access to it, I got this end paper from um, the Graphics Fairy. So I've already cut that down to my size. And um, I thought I'd put that on. And it's a slightly um, rough surface paper again, just to give you that little bit of texture. Um, so I'm going to glue this now I don't obviously want to flip this over I've got a lot of glue on here so I don't want to flip that over on there so you have to use whatever you're gluing on you have to clean your surface you can't um... oh hello Sydney um, you can't um, you know flip it over and put it on top of the glue obviously because it will mark it so would you just that piece of fluff is driving me bananas okay so now I hope really I'm on screen. Yes, I am. There's my hands there. Okay. So uh, let's put the glue on here and we'll glue our end. It's really the simplest project. I have to say, I'm so excited about it. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm glad that I, I purchased that. And, um, and, um, and then it popped in my mind that I'd like to make something like that and print on fabric. Um, and I had mentioned the other day that I was elaborating the idea in my head where I just wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I just thought it might turn out looking a little bit bodgy, um, you know, sort of not of any quality, if you know what I mean. But I, you know, I took the plunge, I bought the, the cardstock and I gave it a whirl and I'm really happy with the results. So, And I'm sure a lot of you are much more better crafters than I am, much more precise and... Um, and yours will probably turn out amazing, 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 amazing. So here, I'm concentrating now because otherwise I'll make a mistake. Um, now the thing about also, just to note, about um, black cardstock is it, if you get anything on it like glue or, I don't know, if you press into it, you, it gets a shine, like it gets marks on it. So you just want to be careful with it, which I have to remind myself because, you know, I'm, I, I am a bit all over the place. And I'm not a clean craft, if you know what I mean. Like, I get stuff everywhere. So so this paper is a little bit bigger than my piece. So I will have to trim it down. And I just got my bone fold. I managed to find that because I cleaned my table. I had two bone folders that was 
gifted to me by different people and both of them had gone missing under the mess and I couldn't find them. So I have found both. So you see I've got excess there. Ideally it would have been better if I had excess at the other end where I was going to be covering it up but I'll just very carefully trim it off and it's gone. So my excess has gone. So that's my front piece. It's already done. Okay. Well, not done, done, but it's nearly done. Um, now we'll do the back. So the back, um, right, I need to glue. Now I don't, I'm not going to change my sheet here because I didn't get that much glue and both sides of this is, are going to be covered. So it doesn't matter if I get a bit of glue on the other side because I'm covering it anyway. So that way we waste less. It's a nice big book to glue on for this sort of thing. Now I don't know if I put enough glue there, but we'll try because I'm one on the the on the on the embroidered one. I put way too much glue and I had to smoosh it off. And I think it's better to have a bit less because this really does stick. the The vinyl or the PVA glue um, sticks very well and very fast, especially if it's not got, it's not too thick when you put it on. I think that's perfect. We don't want any air pockets, that's all. Okay, I'll clean my finger off. Here we go. There we go. And now, I want to get this, especially this part up here. So I think I'll start from over here. And and they put this, this had the stamps, someone's written there. So I'm, I'm taking that as my up, even though the stamps are upside down on the on the piece. Now this one um, is quite wonky so um, I'll just do my best. I'm going to be trimming it off. This one's, as I said is bigger which is great because you have much it's much easier to lay it down as you see you just then flip it over and trim away and you're done. And I'm just laying my scissors right next to the cardstock and trimming it off as best I can. Okay, I've gone quiet. I'm just concentrating on my cutting. You see, I didn't do a very good job. Maybe I shouldn't concentrate. Okay. And, oh, if I remember, I hope I remember, I'll just show you afterwards how I measured my, um, my embroidery to cut it out. Okay, if we just put that over there, getting some nice pieces to use in other projects. Right glue and we're going to glue our end paper on and then we're nearly ready to construct the book. It's really that easy. And as I said, you can make them any size you want. You don't even need to know my dimensions. I'll tell you them if I remember afterwards um, in case you particularly like that those dimensions by the look of it on the screen. But um, really they can be any size. Even so, I think even small ones would be really cute. I, in fact, I haven't thrown out my leftover bits of cardstock because um, I might make some mini ones. Wouldn't that be cute? Okay. And then we don't need our glue. Oh, well, we might need a bit of glue if we, we're going to do the, the front. Okay, so I'll put that over there. And I've got to grab this and... Oh, I'm a little bit hungry today. It's nearly lunchtime. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's that. So let's put these aside. We're not going to stitch these yet. We're going to let them just dry a teeny tiny bit. This glue does dry fairly quickly. I mean, I stitched that, it was slightly damp, but it didn't do anything to my needle. Also because I did thin it out with my fingers, as you saw, and so um, it's still a bit damp now, but I, I did smooth it out so there weren't any really thick bits, if you know what I mean. Actually, I might just put those under there so they flatten a bit. Now this is, now I've got to do this bit here. now. They're not exactly 100% the same size, but it doesn't matter. Um, I don't know how many I've got. Um, 
first of all, this Fabriano paper has a rough side and a smooth side. Um, um, so I, I'm thinking I'll have the, the rough side facing up, although it doesn't really make any difference. So I've got one, two, three. I did count them, but I can't remember. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you need about fifteen pieces. I've got plus two for the back and cup, the back and the front. So seventeen in total. Okay, so we need to score these now. So I've got my little scoreboard thing and it's in inches here, so I've got no idea. But what I did was, I don't know if you can see, I went, I don't know how you, what you call it. I'm I went on the between the one and a quarter and the one and a half. There's a marking there. Halfway between the one and a quarter and one and a half. So I did that one there. So basically, so I've got, I want my, I'm going to score it on my smooth side. Um, and I just did it twice. I mean, your border can be any, anything that you like. Oh, I was going to do this before I did the video. So you didn't have to sit, sit there and see me scoring. But anyway, you're going to have to sit there and see me scoring because I didn't do it. Did not do it. I forgot. Okay. It's quite relaxing. I'd never done this before, as I mentioned. It's quite relaxing scoring. I feel a little bit professional, really. Okay, come on. Get this done. I'm very sorry I didn't do it before. My intention was to do that. Such a ding dong. Memory like a sieve, as I've told you before. And I think it can only get worse. I don't even know if I'm on screen. Who knows? It would not be the first time. Okay, and then you need to pay attention in the next bit for a second. Okay. Now, my idea is that I might blog this blogged for goodness knows how long and so then I flip them over and that's my front and they see they fold up that way I think that's correct uh, first of all my idea is that I'll blog this and I'll upload this image and that image on the blog for you to click on it right click and save image and that way you can use them okay that's what I'm that's what my idea is and I need to try and get that done I need that um, before I upload the video. Okay, so this is my back. I am not scoring the back. The back does not need to fold, but I am scoring the front. So I'm just going to flip it over and do the same. Even though it's a little bit wet, I won't press too hard. I don't want to rip anything. Um, I'm just going to score the front as well. Okay, and let's give it a little fold. I know it's wet, but anyway, I don't want to fold that. I've got to stitch that now. So I made myself, for the holes, I made myself a little template. Now, what I did was I, I just grabbed um, one of my folded over pieces that I had. It was a strip. Um, and I just put it in here. I'll, I'll just do it. I'll do a little one here. Um, it was a strip like this, and I just put it there. I scored it, my width there I'm using the wrong one uh, there and I just cut it out like so and that way I have 
well this one's actually no it's not quite the right height it was longer so it was longer and I it fits on there and it was actually longer so to get the right height I put a marking where's my pencil gone I put a marking um, here and down there and then I just trimmed it off to the right height okay so I've got my template to do my holes like so okay so then what I did I actually did them separately each one separately but that's the right way um, I th yes uh, well I'm, I'm gonna do them in threes but if you're not confident do them separately okay I'm gonna put my holes in in threes I, if I go like that they're fairly well um, lined up and then I just sorry just clip on this line it up clip it on everything's lined up put a clip there so it doesn't move maybe put one here maybe we'll just double check okay I've got my screw punch you might have a crocodile or something like that that you use you can use that um, I don't have a crocodile I have my screw punch here and I put in my biggest one the biggest makes the biggest this size hole it's perfect so I'm just gonna clean it out okay because otherwise it won't punch very well and get this Did it go through oh yes there you go it goes through quite easily when you just do three so there you go you can see the holes there um, and that's the first lot done okay because we've got to do quite a few we'll have to do it about five times Is that correct so yeah got my thing going there and I need just a second make sure they're lined up you don't want them to not be lined up otherwise if you're not confident about that just don't don't do it that way do each single one I'm just doing it for um, to be faster and I'm feeling more confident as this is now my third one I'm making. I'll probably do, make a, do a big boo-boo or something and have to delete the video and start all over again. That would be a bit of a blow. Okay. Okay. Oh, that, that was the other thing. I was going to have the others done before I started the video. No, 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 that's just not happening, is it? Do it all on video. Because we've all got time to watch me punch holes. Now, make sure you don't. I put a T. I didn't mention that. I put a T for the top. So I always know I have to put that at the top. Yes, that's a very important thing to remember. Can you imagine if they don't line up? I've done something wrong. For some, I mean, wouldn't that be interesting? Get all the little bits out. Otherwise, if it fills up too much, you can't do it. That didn't even come out. You cheeky monkey. There we go. Did you come out? No. Let me just see if it's perforated. There we go. I forced it to come out. There you go. Just pull it off. There we are. How many more? We've got two more, two more lots to do, and then we've got to do the front and the back. So how many have I got here? One, two, three, I think. Or was that two? I think that's only two. Let's take three. Make sure they're lined up, more or less. Well, no, they need to be lined up, otherwise you won't be able to stitch it in. So there's no more or less in this case. Okay, so I'd, I clip that on just so it doesn't slip. It just makes it that much easier to do that. That's just a step. I would not skip that step. Let me just see if I'm recording because that I really wouldn't like to have to start again. Okay, that one's done. Okay, that's done. Nearly done. And... So these holes are a little bit um, sort of they're not centered. I just I actually took them off here. 
from where this was. That's why they're not exactly centered. You can do yours more centered. I did mine off because I wanted to put the holes where the holes were in, in this original one. Because I think that it would have looked funny if I had holes in a different spot that were more centered, if you know what I mean. What did you bring home, Steffi? Uh, Peaches, yeah. Oh, broccoli, yummy. Oh, broccoli. we can do that in the oven. See, okay. He's been to mummy's house and come back with goodies to eat. Okay, so that's that. So they're all done. Then we've got to do the top. I mean, the, you know, the cover. What, you know, the top, the cover. So put this here. Use your same template and do that. All right. Oh, it came out. Oh, that's never happened before. It wasn't it's not tight enough. And just tighten it. Hopefully it doesn't come out again. It's because I'm doing it on this mat, I'm putting holes everywhere. Oh no, they seem to have healed. Oh, there you go. Oh, kind of slightly, yeah. Slightly healed. I usually do it on another mat, but I couldn't find it. I don't know where I put it. I didn't put it back in its normal place, so I can't find it. Okay, so that's that. You see more or less on the holes. And then this one, that's the top where the writing is. Um, and also, that's where the flap is on the envelope. It's on the outside, so the stamps, they put them all on upside down, you see. And I just put that there. And then. Okay. Right. Let's just get those out. Right. So we're ready to put it all together. Don't need that anymore. Just put this away. I think that goes that way. Okay. I've got my front, I've got my back, I've got my pieces. Now I want I said I wanted the rough side up. Just check them all. On my on my um, fabric one I put the rough side down, but it actually doesn't matter because if you're gonna put pictures on both sides, or photos I should say, it doesn't really matter, does it? So get all of those. I can see through them, so they're fairly well lined up, that's good. I can see through them, I put my bottom, I can see I can see the light there and put my top on. And I'm going to use this again, so you'll use, you could use some string like this if you wanted to. You could use some sari silk, if you have a nice big eyed needle, now where's mine, did I, did I put it away or did I leave it on my table to be lost? You can probably see it. The other day I was looking for my needle. It was right in the center of the video. So you could, when I was doing the bags, and I must have put it back in here. I do tend to put, I did. I do tend to put them back because I don't want to lose them. So I've got a big eyed needle here. It's very blunt. And I just got to line it all up and try, oh wait, no, I haven't lined it all up, have I? I've not done a good job of lining up. There we go. That's it. That's all lined up. And I go down here. With this one, because it's not that thick, I'm actually going to go around twice. So I'm going to go through twice. Like so. It's so easy. I never cut it before I'm done. And I actually think that's too long, so I don't want to waste it. So I can shorten it to, to whatever I want. I never, 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 never waste it. Give it a tug. You don't want it to be loose. Loosey goosey. Goosey loosey. No, loosey goosey. And I tied a knot. This is not too thick. Like if I were using this that's really thick, I would not tie a knot. I'd just do a bow. But this one I can I can afford to tie a knot. It doesn't actually I don't think it actually matters if it's not 100 percent tight. Because um 
gives you room for expansion. And you could also, um, whoever, could untie it and add more pages. I wanted to. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now we've got to do the next step. Put my needle away. Don't need my clips. Don't need my template anymore. Put the template up there. I probably should keep that. Um, right, so now I used this beautiful... Um, trim it was meant to be inserted into something that I bought that in Florence and I absolutely love it so I'm going to use that I used it on the other one the original one so I vaguely trim it like that and we're going to glue that on so let me just see which is the up that's the up so put it there oh on the other one I, I did in a very bodgy fashion, puncture, puncture holes. I think I'll just go over. So this one you wouldn't be able to include, put in new pages, because I'm going to glue over the top of it. I'm not going to put the holes in. So I'm just going to move this and put my glue on. Oh, I don't want to. I did it again. I've done it again. I don't want to cover up snapshots. I have to wipe that off. So you're going to get that... Um, it's going to get that aged look because I've wiped off the glue like the other one. Wipe it even further so it looks bodgy. So this one, oh, you see I've done it again. My snapshots is further over this way, um, so it must have printed out better. So I have to glue it there. That's what I have to do. You see my thing is more over that way. I don't know why. Anyway, I don't want to cover up the snapshots. So you don't want to make the same mistake as me, guys. And so I need to put this here. There we go. I think I want to keep the lace. I might slip it down and trim down the bottom. Oh, just do as you're told because my fingers are sticky. There we are. So maybe I should have used something thinner. Now the other one was good because it was wonky and so it was over this way a bit more. Where is it? And I was able to get a bit more lace on there without covering up the S. But I've got a bit less here on this one. It doesn't matter. We'll survive. And then here, I'm just going to glue it right over. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Even this could go on the front would be nice. I'm going to cover over the holes, I don't care. I'm not going to put any glue in the holes, that's that's the only thing, because I don't want to get glue on my pages. And I'm not gluing on my edge there, because I don't, I'm not interested in gluing that. But I guess you could, because you don't see that bit. And I'm actually going to smooth this out, because um, it'll, it seeps through the fabric. It will a bit anyway, but if I take a little bit off... It'll be better. Hopefully I'm on screen. I'm very hungry. I might have to go and tell dear hubby to prepare lunch. Okay. Right. So then I'll trim off the excess. I mean, you can just see, even using the same elements, no two are the same. I won't throw that out, you never know. Okay, and now, so I've only got a little bit of lace there, which I would have liked a bit more, but it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. Let's just see what this would look like. A little bit of this there would be nice. Could be nice, just that. Let me see. Take that off. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm going to do something different on this one. I'm going to trim this down. Probably ruining it. I don't want to glue down my bow. So 
So I'll put that there. I need just trying to see where else I need to put the glue down to here. And of course, if you had um, leather cord to tie it up with leather cord, that could be really cool as well. But I don't have any, so I have to use what I've got. Put this. Okay, and then I've got to find my fluffy stuff. Where is it? Where is it? Here's a piece. Is this going to be big enough to go there? Might not be big enough. I don't know. Have I used it all? Here's another piece. How big is that piece? Isn't that nice? That might be better, that piece. I'm going to put that there and something little inside. I mean, you could leave it. You don't have to put anything in here. I just like to... We just gave it a little bit of something else. Okay. Oh, need to put that up there. And then I need to find something to put in the centre there. <laughs> that will be interesting. Um, where did I put the Tracy Fox things here? Let's see, because there's lots of interesting things in here, but some of them might be too big. And my other issue is I, I did print them out on um, sticky paper, and so they're probably not the best for the, for that reason. Like that could be good, because then you could write, you know, like a place, or I mean, I like that, but it's too big. Um, or I don't know the person's name or whatever you like so of course I'm going to audition everything aren't I oh you could put with love in there even you see no. you could put just a little Oh, I like that. A little, fa and that's printed on fabric. That's one of Tracy's printed small on fabric, and I really like that. I'm going to put that there. Happy mail. You could put a happy mail on there if it's going to be a happy mail. Labels. This kind of label could be good. Now, see, that could be good too. I think I like this. My first choice, especially for you. Um, obviously. Uh, in my on my other one, this one, I cut my um, fluffy stuff at a bit bigger so it would fit better. So the the possibilities are endless. So I'm going to put some glue on there, and glue that. Now, I obviously, I can't. It's very hard to get the glue onto the 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 gauzy stuff fluffy stuff as I like to call it um, so I'm just dabbing it onto here and this is this was also sprayed um, yeah this was also sprayed so it's pretty well protected so I'm just going to get the glue off my fingers can you imagine if I glued it on upside down so there we have it I've done a variation really do like these so that's that one the original one I'm going to put that under a book so it flattens out obviously you know the glue is curling a little bit um, this is the third one actually so that's that I like that thank you Tracy and that's the back absolutely love it so I did cover quite a bit of the back on that one too 
just a little bit more this time and then inside I've got this end paper from um, the graphics fairy uh, it might be in the premium membership I'm not quite sure and then I also did this one um, and it's got also a graphics fairy end paper and I think they are gorgeous love them so there you go so that's my little project done now I just quickly wanted to show you so I did cut the image out of this let me just put these away otherwise I'll find they'll be everywhere I just want to show you how I measured my embroidery in my very bodgy fashion. So let's move these out of the way. That's rubbish. Move everything out of the way. Try to stay in a tidy, neat and tidy state. It's quite difficult for me, as you know. Okay, so um, first of all, I tried this one. It's too big, but um, just I've got, I've got a piece of extra cardstock up here. Um, so this one I didn't I tried I just tried to place it in a few different ways and like so and well it probably would have been nice um, so that would be obviously the side where I'm gonna have my holes and my bow so I just tried actually I put it on top and tried to see what did I like the best so that could have been an option um, but then I decided to go with this one in the center and what I did was I put my I don't know if I'm on screen I put my piece of cardstock on top it's beautiful linen this one put it on top I bought it how straight it was I drew around it and then cut it out fairly fairly um, maybe even cut it out slightly bigger than your piece very you know just on the outside of your drawn line to make sure that when you glue it down you've got enough to sort of cover your piece of cardstock. Oh, do you know what I did? Oh my goodness, I completely forgot. I've forgotten a step. I've just realized I didn't stitch around it. <gasps> I didn't stitch around it. Now what am I going to do? I glued over the top. Oh well, this is not stitched. This one will stay not stitched. What a shame. I didn't stitch around it. So before you put it together, you have to stitch around it. So, oh my God, what a goose. Oh, and I've got all of that on there. I don't think I can get it off. Can I? It's not dry yet. It's not dry yet. I'm going to pull it off. I'm going to do it. Am I mad? No. No, I can't do that. I'm not going to pull it off. I'm not going to fix it. See, if I hadn't have done that, I could have pulled it all apart and fixed it. But anyway, it's done. That one's without stitching. Yes. Okay. You won't be hot? No. Um, yeah, I didn't stitch Can around it. Walk away? We are walking. Um, I'm just trying to think if I can get it in there. I'll wait for it to dry and then I'll, I'll see if I can stitch around that part. I won't be able to stitch there though. Oh, what a shame. I didn't. I'll keep that one. Um, yep, so anyway... Before you put it together, stitch around. I would see that's because I left it on the side to um, to dry a bit and I didn't stitch it. Oh my goodness, I'm very upset with myself. The stitching really is so much nicer. So don't forget to stitch, guys. Got to stitch it. See, I do make mistakes all the time. Okay, so that is my bodgy tutorial. Forgot to stitch it. Mm. And um, anyway, I hope you guys remember to stitch around your pieces. Um and enjoy this project. So thank you for watching. Bye.